Oh, everybody tells him that. Everybody tells him that. Hi, Gene. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, excited to come back home uh, and play a really good OU team. Uh, we just started our prep yesterday. Um, uh, looking back at, at our game on Saturday, um, kind of tale of, of two different halves for us on defense. We really struggled. In the first half on defense, we just couldn't settle down, couldn't get into any kind of rhythm, had couldn't get aligned right. Uh, things that you look at their first five or six plays, and we had some uh, missed assignments, I think, in, in all six of them, and then up scoring a touchdown, things that we had practiced. And, and so that was a little bit frustrating. And then once we settled down, obviously it was a little bit late as far as the amount of points that they had put up, but uh, we played better in the second half. Um, you know, it's something we're kind of building off of from a defensive standpoint of once we settled in, we, I thought we played, um, pretty well, but it just, uh, was too little, too late offensively, uh, really good defense. We played, uh, they said, we're going to stop, uh, Deuce Vaughn and, um, rush the passer and, and make you beat us throwing the football. And when we were down as much as we were down, that's not a good position for us to be in, uh, where we're having to throw and we can't really, um, set up our, our throw with our play with, with the run and trying to get some play action. So then it, uh, uh, became the fact they just laid their ears back and, and rushed the passer and did some really good things. I, we still had an opportunity. It was 31 to 13. And then we get the, the big play with deuce and end of the third quarter, it's 31 20. And we had a couple opportunities, um, with some guys open and we just either couldn't get the ball to them. Um, or we, didn't see him because of the pressure or we had a chance to maybe make it a one score game. But as we talked on Saturday, we kept chasing that one touchdown that we kind of gave up and gave them at the, uh, in the second or excuse me, in the first quarter on the, on the fumbled snap. And so uh, we were chasing that one all night long, but uh, came back on, on Sunday, went through the film, visited with the guys yesterday. we got to learn from it. Um, Going to have adversity is first adversity we've had this year. Now it's how we respond. A uh, good opponent coming in here, great opponent coming in here. So uh, we can't, uh, uh, we got to flush that one and, and get ready to play a great OU team. Do you know how likely it is that you'll have Skyler? I, I would say not likely this week. Um, he's doing more things, but I, I, I just think it'd be, you know, maybe late in the week we'll have a better understanding, but right now I would say, no, it's going to be Will and Jaron. Our hope all along was the open week. Um, getting him a chance to be back for Iowa state. That's kind of the timetable. It was, um, uh, I, I don't think that'll change. Um, he was doing more things. Don't get me wrong. He's doing more things, but to play a game, I don't, I don't think so right now. Um, well, I mean, I, I know you mentioned him being available. Is it going to be him able to run the ball? Uh, yeah. Um, we believe so. I think, uh, right now he's banged up. A lot of guys are, uh, but I believe over the next, two or three days, you know, some of the soreness will come out and I think he'll be a effective will. Um, and uh, time will tell on that, but I really believe with the status that we did get from him um, yesterday, it was mostly uh, Jaron and he took some snaps, but uh, I, I think as the week progresses, he'll start to feel better. Hey, Chris, uh, general question here, but why do you think playing Oklahoma the last two seasons has brought out the best in your team? Um, I, I don't have that answer. Um, you know, we were really run out of the place last year. It was 35, 14 in the third quarter. And then, um, momentum changes a lot of things and we scored a touchdown and, and, uh, I think J Mac had a, had, had a big turnover, uh, on a big hit and we block a punt next thing. You know, it's, 35, 35. So part of that is the momentum and, and it just flipped for us. Um, we played really well the year before at home and then kind of had to hang on. Uh, I, I don't think it has anything to do with who we're playing. We talked about that yesterday too. We've got to worry about us um, because we're, we're going to play a team that knows that we've beat them the last two years. They're going to be ready to play. They're going to be prepared. And uh, I think we'll get Oklahoma's best. So I, I really couldn't answer that. I don't know. And um, you, when you were at North Dakota State, also had a couple of years where you went up and, and beat FBS teams. You could say you were the underdog in those games. Do you find yourself coaching any differently in those settings when you know your team is the underdog? No, I, I think it's still all in your preparation. And, um, you know, I, I think so often we as coaches 
sometimes or even as players worry about the opponent when we need to worry more about how we can be better ourselves we whether it's us we got off blocks so much better the first three games than we did against Oklahoma State Oklahoma State's a good football team but we didn't get off blocks as well well was it I don't know why that was. So it's not really the opponent. Sometimes uh, it's sometimes yourselves and, and we misfired on some things offensively. Uh, and so whether or not it's an opponent that you're an underdog, your favorite stuff, I, you still got to come ready to play every, every weekend. I think you're seeing that across the landscape of college football uh, with teams that quote are favored to win and don't win or, or are hanging on. We've had one ourselves this year playing Southern Illinois. I think there's just a lot of parity because of the, uh, the teams with so many seniors. It hasn't necessarily been easy for them going from one quarterback to the next to the next, but what do you want to see from your wide receivers to get their production moving, moving up? It's, it's everybody. It's not just the wide receivers. We have to design some things better for them um, uh, from a, from a coaching standpoint to get the ball out, maybe a little bit quicker. Uh, we've got to protect a little bit better. We had some good max protect things uh, called on Saturday, but we miss a block on a max protection. So we got to throw the ball early to Malik, uh, or maybe we have a chance. I mean, little things, it's just some little details that it's not just the quarterback. It's not just uh, a receiver. It's not just an offensive line. It's a tight end. It could be somebody in that group it could be, uh, how we design the play, but we we've got to, um, be able to throw the football um, more efficiently, more effectively. We did that early on with Will on that first drive. And then um, once we got behind again, um, we didn't have that element of the run. A few other guys I think are dinged up. TJ Smith, Stubblefield, Daniel Matter, Bebe. Is there any update? Yeah, on the right I think Reggie's the one that's got the best chance to play out of those guys. He practiced yesterday. Um, TJ did not. Daniel did not. Um, we're, they're not ruled out. Um, and today they're doubtful. So we'll, we'll kind of see where we're at, whether it's maybe getting them back limited Wednesday, Thursday. Um, but Reggie should be able to play. And how do you feel about your offensive line performance? Obviously probably wanted to see more, but was yeah. that a product of them kind of loading up the box? Yeah, a little bit of that, but we, we've had a lot of people load the box up and we were able to crease by guys for five and six yards. We were actually pretty good on first down efficiency running the ball. We just were really poor on second and third down. Um, all of us need to play a little bit better. All of us need to coach a little bit better, um, but give Oklahoma State credit. I think they really did some good things schematically against us and, and they got off blocks and we sustained blocks a lot better the first three weeks than we did uh, this last week. So we've got to be better at sustaining blocks and, and um, but also give Oki State some credit. Um, Chris, you, you, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Chris, are you getting receivers open on the type of routes that you would anticipate? Sometimes. And sometimes there's really good coverage. And so we've got to, we have to do some more one-on-ones with our DBs and wide receivers. So we, we aren't going against uh, maybe service team guys. We're going against some of our, our better corners so that we can uh, get off people that grab and hold you and stuff. And it's not, I'm not saying that's what it was. As a DB coach myself, I think you should grab and hold because it's not called that often. You have to be able to get off of that. It's no different on punt or on kickoff. People are going to grab and hold you until you force them to get off you and you rip hands away and, and, and uh, uh, get off of press coverage or get off of bounce man coverage. And, and so it's effective tool that we have to be better at getting off of. But there were some times we had some guys open that either uh, we didn't see them or uh, the protection broke down. And we couldn't get the ball out. Injury situation with Nate Malak that prevented him from playing Saturday? No, two things happened on that. Um, one, the, the, we had a, a specific personnel grouping that he was going in on, and they didn't get into that personnel grouping as much. And then they just, their temple didn't allow you to sub as much. Uh, no Daniel Green in the second half, but it didn't seem to matter that half. So what, is the, what does that mean for your defense and then getting him back against Oklahoma? Uh, a couple things. One, uh, Daniel's got to continue to work on keeping his eyes up and seeing what he hits. Um, I think anytime it goes to replay, it's never probably very good. Um, and we got to make sure that the game remains safe. And so um, they're going to call that. And, and we as coaches all uh, understand that and appreciate the fact that we want to make sure and keep the game safe. Um, and so he's got to learn to tackle with his eyes up and, and see what he hits a little bit better. On the flip side, uh, Nick Allen's getting 
some really good snaps and really valuable snaps. He had some against Stanford. He had a full game against Southern, had another half of football. And uh, Nick's playing really well and made some really splash plays. It's just that Nick's also a starter on all four special teams, and he's playing every snap of the second half. And we have to be able to have, you know, somebody spell him on special teams or um, – when, when Daniel's around and plays uh, a full game, Nick's got to be able to spell him too so we can keep them both fresh or both good players. And then what's the difference in the game plans from Oklahoma State to Oklahoma? Um, well, we're developing those right now. Uh, obviously, the big play uh, capability of Oklahoma uh, via the pass or, or, or run is something that um, – they kind of they have the ability to get you at any moment at any time because they have such tremendous skill players, tremendous speed, quarterback with a phenomenal arm. Been focusing obviously uh, on that side of the ball on Monday, um, and then uh, for us on offense, we have to be able to uh, find ways to to crack the run, whether it's quarterback run, whether it's perimeter run. Um, whether it's some inside run, probably a combination of all things so that we don't have people playing nine guys in the box against us and, and bringing everybody. We've, we have to be able to hit the explosive play. Similar to what we did against Nevada early in that game, it kind of softened them up a little bit. Coach, uh, when you go back and watch, look at film, how, how worrisome are these issues with the passing game? Um, they're worrisome without question. And it's a combination of a lot of things. It's, it's us designing some things to get guys open against specific coverages. It's us getting open. I don't care if it's me against you. It's just me getting open and, and not allowing you to be grabby and hold with me and us making sure that we protect long enough so that we can get the ball out. We, we had some really good uh, throws in the first drive with Will, and some of those were bang, bang throws where some people were in his face, but we were able – Tyrone Tyrone Howell got off coverage one time and made a big play. Um, Phillip got off coverage and made a big play. Landry got off coverage and made a big play, so I know we're seeing it. It's, we're capable of doing it. It's just got to be more consistent. And um, when they take away Deuce like that, is it – how much does that affect your playbook? When affects it a, quite a bit. I mean, he's uh, one of the best running backs in the country. Uh, so other people have to step up, but whether that's other people in the run game or us doing some things to throw the football so that they have to say, okay, we can't put all these guys up here. Their free safety st stood at 10 yards and never backpedaled. Had we hit one of those home run balls over, over their head when we had a couple opportunities, their DB made a couple good plays, but if we hit one of those, it's another touchdown. If we hit both of those, it's maybe a different type of ball game because then we're not chasing those points. And that's something that we talk about as, as staff when I meet with the offense is we have to be able to hit those home run plays. And to the extent of one, I thought a kid made a really good play. The other one, we have it max protected, but we don't block the right guy. So we have somebody come clean right at will and he hits him right before he wants to throw it. And we should have it picked up. And finally, do you expect to see similar defensive schemes until you prove you can defeat it um yeah i would i would think we we've seen kind of the same schemes to be honest with you um whether it was stanford to southern to nevada to oklahoma state oklahoma state probably had better players than the other three teams did but we've seen nine guys in the box ten guys in the box and we were able to um rush the football uh, for sure against nevada against that look we were able to throw the ball effectively against Stanford in that look. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Southern Illinois, I don't think we, we played very, very well, but give those guys credit. We didn't, I don't think do a great job in that game either. So we, we, we have to continue and we, you know, we've got a long season ahead of us. And so we have to continue, continue to find ways and we have to continue to design more things. We have to continue to be more competitive on, on getting off the line of scrimmage. We've got to be more competitive, uh, in our offensive line so that we have more time to throw it there. It's no secret. We have to continue to improve offensively. Chris, I was just curious. Uh, I know it's early. You said it's a long season. Sometimes looking at a top five or top 10 opponent to be able to defeat them really is a nice feather in the cap elephant in the room. I mean, do you, do you talk to your team about the ranking or is that something no one talks about? Yeah, we uh, no. I, I would say the kids probably know that where 
where somebody's ranked um, when we play them, but it's nothing that we would emphasize of this would be a great win because it's over a third ranked, fourth ranked team. I, I'll be honest with you, every win's a great win. Um, and and you, you know that the more, the longer you're in the profession that it's hard to win football games. And so um, it, it, it takes a, uh, a great effort for four quarters in this league to win. And we didn't put together a four quarter game. And I know we keep talking about what we need to do offensively, but we need to play better on defense. We didn't play good enough in that first half to give us an opportunity um, in, in the second half. Uh, we just didn't. So collectively being that it's a long season, we have to continue to get better. We're beat up on both sides of the ball, but a lot of people in the country are. So the other people have to step up too. Like there's some good parity in the Big 12 this year. It looks like that. You know, we've only played one game, and and Oklahoma State probably played its best game of the year. I, I would say from the film I've watched. Um, but you look at you know Baylor's win over Iowa State. You look at SMU over over TCU to uh, West Virginia, uh, who played really well against OU and had a chance to win. I, I think that's keep, we keep going back to this. But I don't care if it's us playing Stanford to Southern to Nevada. You're seeing teams with a ton of seniors and a ton of fifth and sixth year guys. And so when you have that experience, you can just do more things. You're not playing vanilla offense and, and vanilla defense because coaches and players know their schemes. And so um, that's the thing that uh, I think you're going to continue to see throughout college football this year. We don't really talk about rankings, but K-State fans out there know about the rankings for sure. How important is this crowd on Saturday. Oh, it's huge. I mean, this is uh, going to be a great environment. Um, we're excited to, to play at home again. Our, our, our guys love running out uh, of the tunnel and, and uh, seeing the crowd and with the band and the students. We need everybody to come back out because um, I think we have a really good football team. Have Did we stumble last week? You bet. But um, we didn't quit either. And our kids played their tails off for four quarters. We just came up short. And uh, I know our guys are excited about coming back home. You mentioned it before. Um, you didn't know how this team would bounce back from its first taste of adversity, but how, how have they so far? Yeah. Well, on Monday was our first weightlifting session with Coach True and his staff. And, and I told the guys, this is since Coach True and his staff have been here, which was about last March, uh, and so much energy was brought into the program with, with these guys, uh, we talked about it through the spring, throughout the summer, through fall camp. We haven't had any adversity with this with this strength staff. And that's – your guys are around the strength staff more than they are anybody, especially during the, the summer and fall. Uh, and I said, okay, how are we going to respond? And Coach True and his staff came up, and I met with him yesterday after the weight session. And they said, Coach, it was a great session. And everybody was locked in. Um, everybody was uh, working hard. Everybody was holding each other accountable. Everybody was fully invested. And that's the first sign. And uh, yesterday's practice was pretty spirited. Um, Noah Johnson asked to grab the team at the end of practice and talk to the team about what he thought we needed to do to be successful, what he thought we needed to do to kind of flush what happened, uh, learn from it, but continue to, to believe and continue to grow. And so I know we're in a good spot. Does that mean we're going to win the next week or the next week? No, but we're building the things right now and building that foundation of a great culture that we need to have. And when you look at Oklahoma, their scores are a little bit lower this year. They're winning with defense. Do you see them playing any differently? No, and I'll be I'll be honest. I'm kind of shocked that their scores are are, are, are low. Um, I know they've played Nebraska at a good defense and West Virginia had a good defense, but this is still Oklahoma with unbelievably explosive players, with a great play caller, with uh, schemes that people are are open. People can be running free at times. We've seen that. Uh, every team in the Big Twelve has has seen that when they've played them because it's just a it's a tough preparation because of their great skill as well as the ability for them to just pound the ball at you and uh, so we have to play um, complementary football we have to be able to control the football offensively whether it's in a short passing game running the football we have to be successful in special teams and this is a game that you know, we were meeting as a defensive staff that the explosive play cannot happen. And that's a hard thing to say against a team like Oklahoma that typically gets the explosive play on everyone. How much did Oklahoma State's tempo limit what you guys have been 
used to doing defensively? Um, it, it did a little bit. Uh, it's just probably not as, as much as the fact that uh, they were, they were successful rushing the football. So we wanted to get some bigger, keep our bigger defensive linemen in the game that probably wore us down a little bit um, playing the same six guys rather than the rather than getting nine and 10 in there. Something that we probably are learning from as a defensive staff that when the ball goes out on their sideline, we just need to rotate guys in and have confidence that the officials are going to hold the ball because that's, that's the rule. If it goes out on uh, their sideline, you don't know if anybody's coming in or out, you should just rotate guys. And that's something that uh, um, we need to probably do a better job of that as coaches to get more fresh bodies in there. What has Timmy Horn given you three, four games? Timmy's been really good. I think Timmy can play better, and I think Timmy would tell you he can play better. Um, but he's been really good. He's been disruptive. He's been a great leader. Um, so happy he, we have him. But uh, like, like we talked earlier, we, we have uh, eight more games of, of Timmy Horn, and, and uh, I'm excited because I think his best football is in front of him still. Not seeing as much quarterback run game when Jaron was in the game. Is that more based on his skill set or being worried about losing another? I think it was probably the latter in the fact of we we really went into that game with two guys taking reps throughout the week of practice. And uh, um, we saw Will have some decent runs early on, one big run, and then got hit. And when we came back out of halftime, and I know Jaron ran it a couple times, but it was – the other two guys that we brought on the trip weren't ready to play. And so we were down to one guy and we wanted to make sure it was going to take some shots anyway, because they were going to blitz that we needed to make sure and, and, and keep him healthy because we knew coming into this week. Um, now we'll get um, Jake or Max Marsh more reps and ready to play. Cause I don't know about will Skyler doubtful uh, that uh, who's the next guy coming in. And I couldn't tell you who that would be. We're hoping that will, progresses this week and I think he will I really firmly believe that will will be fine come Thursday he just wasn't uh he was a little bit sore yesterday but the injury that he sustained I know he'll get better this week when it comes to facing a team like this with the reputation that they have just how much confidence can you guys draw on the fact that you've beaten them the last two years well you hope there's some confidence there but uh in, in the fact that we've had some success in, in doing whatever offensively defensively or, or on teams but there's also that factor of they're saying the same thing to their team that this is the team that we haven't beaten the last two years and their kids know it too and so uh once again it comes down to executing and playing with great technique we'll play we'll play hard i know that we got to play with better technique than we did last week and we have to execute at a much higher level than we did last week okay have a good week guys